Hello, my name is Joe Cutting and my co-author is Joe Iacovides and we're both from the University of York, UK and our presentation is titled Learning by Doing, Intrinsic Integration Directs Attention to Increase Learning in Games. So the principle of intrinsic integration of educational games holds that the best way of increasing learning is to integrate the learning content with the core mechanics of the gameplay. And this was originated by Habgood and Ainsworth and what they did is that they created this game called Zombie Division in which you learn games through the medium of killing zombies and in the integrated condition you kill zombies by doing performing division sums um, and in the non-integrated condition you can ki still kill zombies but you don't need to use division to do it and then at the end of each level you perform um, division sums uh, as a, a, an exercise and they found that learning was increased in the integrated condition where the gameplay and the, the learning content uh, were the same mechanism. This was further um, explored by Echeverria um, who explored tighter integration at the level of individual game atoms, so the small mechanisms um, within the game. And he used the game to teach electrostatics um, and in this game you have to get the blue crystal on the left to the purple goal on the right using electrostatic forces um, and Echeverria found that learning was increased if he made explicit um, the electrostatic forces he was trying to teach um, by showing visual representations um, of the forces and how they combined and that then increased learning. So intrinsic integration has been very influential um, and with lots of citations um, particularly a from Kai and Kai Play authors. But how does it work? What's the mechanism behind it? Well, it's got to a stage where intrinsic integration is, is so accepted that it's often used without saying why it's just seen as a generally good thing um, that you should do. Um, but some people do say that it increases learning and engagement, um, but without saying how. Um, but you do then have a, <clears throat> a section of people who say that it increases motivation, which then increases learning. Uh, and this is all very fair enough, because if you look at the actual title of the paper, um, then the paper title suggests that it works by increasing motivation. But that's not actually what Habgood and Ainsworth say, if you read the paper uh, more closely. So the way that motivation is seen to increase learning is by increasing the time on task. So if the game has increased your motivation to perform the task, then you're more likely to spend more time on it and thus more likely to learn whatever you're trying to learn from the game. But the time on the task was exactly the same um, in both Habgood and Ainsworth and Echeverria's studies. Um, time on the task was the same across all conditions, which doesn't fit with a motivational mechanism. So Habgood and Ainsworth actually say in their paper, other explanations are required to explain increased learning. Um, so the other explanations that they consider are explanations based on either cognitive load or attention. So how would they work? Well, cognitive load could moderate learning in games. There's the very influential cognitive load theory of learning, which has been applied particularly in non-digital conditions. And the way that that could work is that you have a fixed working memory capacity of your learners. Um, and that doesn't change, so there's only a limited number of things that you can keep in your working memory. Um, and you can imagine that in an integrated game, um, you've got the intrinsic load of the material which um, of, that you're trying to learn, and then you've also got some extraneous load, which is the game elements that you also need to process. And as long as those two combined are less than your fixed working memory capacity, then learning can happen. But imagine in a non-integrated game where the, the game material um, and the learning content are separate, then you'd have the intrinsic load of the material and then the game material is something else, it's another thing. Um, so these two both add up and then that may exceed your fixed working memory and then there's not enough spare memory left for learning. So that's what how cognitive load could affect intrinsic integration. But there's another approach, so the task attention theory of game-based learning posits that attention could also moderate learning. So how would that work? Well, you're probably familiar with the phenomenon of inattentional blindness, where you don't see things because your attention is on another task. Well, 
um, in this classic, as in this classic um, experiment where you're watching people pass the basketball, um, and because you're watching people pass the basketball, you don't see somebody dressed as a gorilla um, walk through. And this has been done with eye tracking to show where people are actually looking. And what we found is that people are actually looking directly at the gorilla, but they still don't see it because it's not relevant to the task that they're performing. So if you imagine in intrinsic integration, in non-integrated games, attention could be focused solely on the task so that players are blind to the learning material. So to test for motivation, cognitive load or attentional mechanisms, we ran a game study with two conditions. So in the first condition, people played a game a bit like Pac-Man, only rather than having power pills that you can eat, which then let you chase the ghosts, each um, Pac-Man and ghost has a little picture in it, and if the pictures match, then um, Pac-Man can eat the ghost with the matching picture. And then in the non-intrinsic condition, exactly the same game, exactly the same graphics, exactly the same gameplay, except that rather than eating ghosts with the same picture, Pac-Man can eat the ghosts with the same colour. And then the pictures change every five seconds, so the players are shown 60 different ones. And then after the game, um, they're then tested um, on the pictures using a forced choice recognition test. And then they also fill in some questionnaires. So how did they get on? Well. A lot more images were recognised in the integrated game um, than the non-integrated game. So learning was much higher. People learnt a lot more images um, and there's a large effect size between them. Whereas then if you look at difference in motivation, motivation questionnaire, no difference in motivation um, between conditions. And then if you look at cognitive load and we use performance of the game as a proxy for cognitive load. And once again, there's pretty much no difference in cognitive load between games. So learning was higher in the integrated condition with no difference in motivation or cognitive load and in the non-integrated condition attention was directed away from the pictures because they're not needed for the game task and in the integrated condition learning increased by an attentional mechanism so is attention the only mechanism behind intrinsic integration well no probably motivation and cognitive load are also probably involved we designed our study just to look for an attentional mechanism and that's what we found uh, but these other mechanisms are probably involved in with complex interactions between them and does this also apply to other forms of learning well as you're probably aware there's lots of other forms of learning and we just kind of tested a very basic form of recognition um, but rather than so rather than thinking of the intrinsic integration directs attention to increase learning in games it's probably more accurate to say that non-integrated games direct attention away from the content which then reduces learning so a lack of integration reduces recognition, which then reduces other forms of learning. So our conclusions is that during gameplay, attention is directed within the game onto features relevant to the game task. And in intrinsic integration, the game task is integrated with the learning content. So this increases learning of that content. And this can happen without changes in motivation or cognitive load. But in real learning games, these are almost certainly a factor and so a subject for future work. And play the game online. Try it yourself.